All right, so first review for our trig post right triangle trig. Converting degree measures into radians and radians into degrees. So again, there's a couple of ways I can do this. If I'm in radians, if I'm in pi right off the bat, I want to get the pi out of there. So since we know that 180 degrees and pi is the same thing, I make myself a fraction that's the equivalent of that. Because if you take 180 and divide it by 180, it's 1. But what this allows me to do when I do it this way is it allows me to cancel the pi's and then I just work with what's left. 5 times 180 and divide it by 2. Shoot, let the calculator do that, right? Get to your answer and be situated. So that's the same way that number 2 would work. Still just going to multiply that out and get to my answer. When I get up to numbers 3 and 4, okay, let's say we do 4, now if I'm trying to go from degrees to radians, I want pi in the answer. So I flip that fraction over to get there. Now, when I multiply across, it's going to look kind of strange. There's a couple of things I need to do here once this happens. I do not want to use pi 3.14 for this. That's, that's not going to help me. That's going to get me some decimal answer. And I also don't want a decimal answer. So like if I do 255 divided by 180, just that part, I don't want to see 1.42 pi. Mm -mm. Math, enter, enter. The pi will stay up top with the 17. And then I just keep the 12 down below. That's written in radians. Okay, Radians just means have it in with pi. And that's all I'm doing on those. I just got to remember the 180 over pi or the pi over 180 to get there. So that's all I'm asking you to do on that part. Now when it gets to the next part and we're drawing angles, that's a little different. So we're going to take a look at a couple of these, 5 and 7. Now I will apologize on one thing. I forgot to draw your axes in. So we're going to have to do that ourselves. So I look at this and I go, okay, negative 330. Having my handy dandy protractor would be helpful. Again, if yours has been misplaced, I have a pile of extras over in front of the folders over there if you need one. But a couple of things to remind ourselves of is some of you are looking for those. If I have a negative angle, that's going to be drawn clockwise. That's how I know that it's negative. So when I start to do a negative angle clockwise, I'm always going to start on the positive x value side when I'm drawing it. But when we're going clockwise, each of my axes are going to be an extra 90 degrees. And I'm going to keep labeling them until I get to a number that's greater than the degree measure I'm trying to draw. In this case, 330. Okay, I drew 360. That'll get me there. And then I'm ready to draw this. So again, I'm starting on the positive x-axis side, and I'm going clockwise for negative. So negative 90, negative 180, negative 270. But if I went all the way back around, that would be 360. That's too much. So I'm at 270. I need to get to 330. How many more degrees do I need? 60 to get from 270 to 330. So I notice I'd stopped here on the y-axis. So I line up my protractor with that. Let's see if I can avoid some glare here. Not real well. That's okay. I go find my 60. Now I can't find it on the inner. That would be way down here. So I find my 60 here. Just kind of let my pen or pencil hover. Put in my dot once I get it out of the way. And finish it off. Okay, I need the arrow on there though to show that, ooh, I started here and I'm ending over here. I've got to get that in there 
Otherwise, not quite right. But again, clockwise if it's negative. If it's positive, then it's going to be counterclockwise. Now, I wanted to do this one because it's in radians. But remember, if I need to think about it in degrees to draw it, that's easy enough to be able to do. One way I can do that, since pi is 180, is I could go into my calculator and say, okay, so 3 times 180 divided by 4. Okay, so this is the equivalent of a 135 degree angle. Now the nice thing about that is, since it's between 0 and 180, I can do the whole thing with my protractor. Because my protractor goes all the way to 135. I can get my dot. It goes counterclockwise. And I'm set. So the only time I have to get cute with it, it's once it goes over 180. Because then I gotta start moving things around a little bit to figure out that other piece. But positive counterclockwise, positive, oops, say that again, Hardy. Negative clockwise, positive counterclockwise. There, I spit it out the right way. So that's how those work when we're doing the drawings. Coterminal angles, positive and negative. Coterminal. We are adding and subtracting 360 degrees to try and find these. So let's say we do one like number nine. We look at number nine and we go, okay. So a negative coterminal. So I grab my calculator and I go, okay. So negative 582 minus 360. Dang. Okay, but it is still negative, so that's fine. I can use that as my negative coterminal. My positive, though, I have to be a little more cautious. Because I go ahead and I add 360, but it's still negative. A positive coterminal angle can't be negative. That'd be kind of silly. So I have to keep adding a 360 until it becomes positive. Once it's positive, I'm good. You're like, okay, now what about, ew, what about one like 11 though? That looks kind of nasty. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. So here's, here's my suggestion. My suggestion is not gonna be to turn it in degrees and then turn it back. You can, but it just takes a lot of time and I don't think that's something we necessarily wanna do. So 360 degrees, is also the equivalent of 2 pi. Because since pi is 180, 2 times 180 is 360. So I want to add or subtract 2 pi from this. Now, here's the part we got to think about a little. To be able to add or subtract 2 pi, I need a common denominator. But there's a simple way of doing this. Okay, I want my denominator to be 3 like this is. To get the number on top of the fraction, all I do is do 2 pi times 3. So 3 times 2 makes this 6 pi. And that's what I'm going to use in making my angles. So here's how it works. For negative, I'm going to have 5 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3. Because it's always just 2 pi times whatever the denominator is. 5 minus 6 is negative 1 pi over 3. Last I checked, that is negative. That one's good. And for positive, I just changed the sign in the middle. 5 pi over 3 plus 6 pi over 3. 5 plus 6 is 11 pi over 3. It's positive. I'm happy. But that's all we're doing on these. It's just kind of working our way through and letting that work itself out. But again, if it starts in radians, if it starts with pi, your answer has to be in radians. 
If you change it to degrees, you've got to change it back. So you put your answer in degrees, I'm not going to take it. Because we've got to get used to doing that. We've got to speak in the trig language of love. And that is radians. All right. Scooch up a little here. Okay. Name the reference angle for each of the following. Ooh. But I did give a hint. Remember, you're going to the nearest x-axis, which is 0, 180, or 360. So let's ponder. Actually, let's ponder with a crazy one. Let's, let's do 14. So you look at that, and you're like, ugh. It's, hardy, it's not even in, like, it's already in radians. I don't like this. Well, OK, let's think in degrees for a minute. So 7 times 180 divided by 2. OK, so it's 630. So let's, let's think about it. Now here's one problem. We have to be under 360 degrees to make this work. So this one's weird. So we actually have to do a coterminal first. That won't happen very often, but it does every once in a while. So let me bring my calculator back up. This is only if your answer is above 360 that you have to do this. OK. So my coterminal would be 270. That's workable. So let's see. Which one is this close to? It's kind of close to either of these. So let's say it was 360. What's 360 minus 270? 90. OK. So my answer for this, my reference angle would be 90 degrees, because it's how far is this? Is this from one of these guys, whichever one's closest. But remember, start radian, not in degree, that's not the way this goes. Start radian, end radian. So we got to get it back to radians. 90 divided by 180, math, enter, enter, pi over 2. That's what I'm looking for. So if I want to think degrees, I can. But then again, if it starts in radians, it must end there. So be prepared to make an adjustment if you need to. Let's play with one more of those. So I look and I'm like, OK, negative pi over 3. Again, pi is 180. So let's think about this. 180 divided by 3. OK, so this is like negative 60 degrees. Now, if you're a visual person, maybe you want to draw a little picture. Maybe you go, OK. So if I had this, negative 60, and I don't have to be perfect with my protractor on this. I know negative 60 comes this way. So there's negative 90. So I could even say, OK. So here's my 60, but wait a minute. What's the closest x-axis? Well, right back where you came from, Hardy. It's like right, right, right there. OK, how far is it to get from 60 back to 0? 60. OK, reference angles. Never. Negative. Never. But my initial angle is negative. I don't care. It's negative. It's never going to be negative. Take my 60 degrees. Whoops. Learn how to divide. <laughs> Let me move this out of the way. 60 divided by 180, which is pi over 3. So if it's in radians, you want to go to degrees, even if you want to draw a picture. Now, if you can just look at it and say, well, Hardy, I kind of knew that 60, the closest value, is going to be 0. It's closer to 180. OK, that's cool. But if not, just something to kind of ponder. Let's even do one with degrees. OK, 145. 
145, which of these numbers is 145 closest to? 180. So it's just 180 minus 145. And I'm done. Okay. So if it starts in degrees, I can end in degrees. If it starts in radians, I can turn it into degrees. But I better get back to radians. So just something, again, to consider when you're doing these. Now this next page, this isn't very often I do this, but I'll have you do this on your own tomorrow. I'm going to work through most of the next page with you. Because this is some stuff that it's been a little while on, and I don't, don't want to get too bad in shape here. So, okay. The sides of a parallelogram have lengths of 14 and 24 feet. You're like, now how do you know? Well, I'm just seeing this side's shorter, so I'm going to use the 14. And one angle is 52 degrees. Now, this is one where I can use some common sense. This angle looks acute. This angle looks obtuse. 52 is an acute angle. So I'm going to assume the 52 is down here. Now, if I need to bust out my help sheet from before that I have, that pink one, because it says use the law of cosines. Okay. So I get that out and I go, well, wait a minute. To use the law of cosines, I need two sides and I need the angle in between them. Well, that's true, because I'm trying to find out what this side equals. Anybody remember something about consecutive angles of parallelograms, what they equal? No. Okay, when we have a parallelogram, Consecutive angles are supplementary. In other words, they equal 180 degrees. So if one angle is 52, I just subtract that from 180. And that will get me the angle measure that I need. Because when I'm using law of cosines, I've got to have the angle that's stuck in between the two sides. So now I go back to my help sheet from before if I need it to be able to do this. So I will help on this one. So my law of cosine says I take the squares of the two sides that I have and I add them. And then I subtract 2 times the product of those two sides times the cosine of my angle. Now I will give you forewarning. My honors class right now is doing stuff with radians. So if you are using a calculator in here, you need to make sure that you go to mode that you are not in radian. That would not be good. You need to go back to degree. Once you've done that, you can type the whole thing in. But here is also where I'm going to need to be careful because that's not my final answer. And it really wouldn't make sense anyway. I mean, does it really make sense if two of your sides are 14 and 24 that the other side's 1185? No, not really. So I need to take the square root of that. And you can take the square root and round it off. Or again, if you hit second in the negative, it'll just plug that prior answer in for you. So about 34.4 feet. That's reasonable because that's much bigger than either of my sides. And I can work that out. But again, you're going to need your cheat sheet to help you with that. Otherwise, you need to know it. So I'm not going to write it up on the board. I'm not going to tell you when it gets to be on the quiz. So I look at the next one. I go, okay. The hour hand of a clock is 9 inches long. Stressing the hour hand. How far did the end of the hour hand travel from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m.? Use the formula. It's my arc length. R times theta. Remember, the angle has to be in radians. Well, I've got the radius, 9 inches. But I need to figure out some things here. So one thing i got to figure out is, okay, how long does it take for the hour hand of a clock to go all the way around? So if I'm dealing with the hour hand, so let's say right now I got my minute hand and my hour hand are at noon. 
When's that hour hand going to hit 12 again? 12 hours at midnight. So the hour hand goes 360 degrees, one full rotation, in 12 hours. Well, if that's true, if I take 360 and divide it by 12 hours, it's going to go 30 degrees in an hour. You're like, so is that the answer? No. That's what I have to know to make this work. So here's where I actually get to use that for something. How long is it from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m.? How many hours? Six. So six hours times 30 degrees means it rotated 180 degrees. You're like, oh, good, there's my angle. Oh, wait. Angle has to be in radians. Okay. Times pi over 180. You're like, well, wait a minute, though. The 180s cancel. It's just pi. That's right. And now I'm almost done. I've got my angle, pi. I've got my radius. So my arc length is 9 times pi. There's nothing else to do. I'm done. That's how far the hour hand traveled in that time period. I'm finished. So that's not bad. So I've, got, I've always, though, got to make sure that if it's not in radians that I put it into that. that that's the one thing I'm going to have to keep stressing to myself to make sure this goes okay. All right. One more of this type. We're going to find our our area, our piece of the pie here. So we have a windshield wiper that's been turned on in a rainstorm. The wiper is 14 inches long. Okay, there's my radius. Assuming it can rotate 150 degrees from one side of the windshield to the other, how much of the area can be cleaned off? Okay, we don't have to figure out the degrees this time, but we still need radians for my angle measure. So I still need to turn 150 degrees into radians. So, let my calculator do its thing. Don't lose my pi here. Okay, so I've got my angle measure, I've got my theta. So now my job becomes to plug it into the formula. So I'm like, okay, one half times my radius squared so let's see here, 14 squared, 196, okay. I'm going to make a fraction out of that too because it just makes life easier on me. Times my angle measure, 5 pi over 6. And again, I'm going to let the calculator help me simplify this, but I don't put the pi in when I'm doing the calculating because the calculator thinks pi is 3.14 and that's not what we're doing. So 196 times 5, and then I'll divide by 2 times 6 is 12. And again, I, not 81.7 pi, no. And then if you wanted to go back and plug in 3.14 for pi because you didn't want to put it in pi, you can, but this is the exact answer. And exact is okay to do. Actually preferred. So that's how I'm going to do it. But again, you'll notice the only real thing I had to do that was complex possibly was turn degrees into radians, and that's really not that complex either. So we'll be all right. Okay. Terminal side contains the following point. Find all six trig functions. Plot the point. So negative 4 is my x value. So I go left 4. My y value, I go up 3. And then remember, we're going to make a triangle. Straight down to make my right angle. 
other one to the origin to make my reference angle. And then I can start labeling sides. But my reference angle is always going to be the one that's by the origin. Always, always, always. If my x is negative 4, that's along the x-axis. If my 3 is along the y, that goes on the y side. And my job then becomes to find the hypotenuse using the Pythagorean theorem. Now, I'm going to be smart. Use parentheses, because otherwise you're going to get some funky stuff going on here. To get your hypotenuse, because we want the triangle, we need all the sides to do all my trig functions. And once I have that, this is just me, bless you, I would label my sides. Okay, so I've got my opposite. I just calculated my hypotenuse which means this guy that's left over is my adjacent side. And at this point, we should know how to find our basic three trig functions without too much help. Good old Sokotoa. So my sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. And the cool thing is the trig functions that are right next to them are just their reciprocals. Okay, notice I'm not changing signs of things. I'm just flipping the fraction over. And that's it. But I have to get that initial hypotenuse and know where opposite and adjacent are to be able to make this work. So again, nothing real complex, but just something to kind of get you thinking a little bit. Kind of going over all this stuff again. Then the mystery, no picture question, and no numbers question. This is interesting. You're told that the cosine of an angle is positive. Okay, where is the terminal side of the angle? Are you limited to just one quadrant? Well, let's think about this. All students take calculus. So all my trig functions are good in quadrant one. Sine is good in quadrant two. Tangent is good in quadrant three. And cosine is good in quadrant four. So now that I've got that back in front of me, let's think about this for a second. So we're told the cosine of an angle is positive. So where's the terminal side? In other words, where's the angle found? Well, let's see. Definitely quadrant four. Is there any place else that cosine would be positive? Quadrant one, because they all are. Okay, so why? All of them are positive in quadrant one, and cosine is in quadrant four. So that a good enough reason. Probably even by drawing me the picture and then writing that would be good enough for me. I'm, I'm not hard to get along with most of the time. So then on the back page, I'm going to go back to some right triangle trig here a bit. I'm going to help draw a picture on 24 and I'm going to do 25 with you. And then notice down at the bottom there's an extra credit question that I'm not going to say much about. But okay, multiple choice. A 15-foot ladder rests against a tree on level ground. Okay, let's see here. Ladder. Tree. Okay. Level ground. All right. So a 15-foot ladder and forms a 75 degree angle of elevation. Where is the correct location of the 75 degree angle? Okay, for our purposes, so we can chat here, I'm gonna put letters on my angles here. Which angle, A, B, or C, is where the 75 should go? A. Because whether it says elevation or even depression, it still will always end up in that place. 
So let's see here. Between the ladder and the ground, yes. Between the ladder and the tree, no. Between the tree and the ground, no. It is not possible, no. Okay, so that one's A. All right, last one coming from me. I'm going to let you play a little bit here. Tammy Jo, whose eyes are five feet off of the ground, now we'll, we'll discuss that too here in a minute, is standing 50 feet away from the base of a building. Okay. So we're 50 feet away from this, from this building. Okay. She looks up at a 73 degree angle of elevation to a point on the edge of the building's roof. How tall is the building? Now, this is just my suggestion. I'm not going to worry about the five feet right away. I'm going to go ahead and solve what I see. So I look at this and I go, okay, I've got, I've got the opposite side and I have the adjacent side. And I have an angle. So which of my trig functions uses opposite and adjacent? Sine, cosine, or tangent? Tangent. So the tangent of 73 degrees is going to equal opposite over adjacent. And I want to solve this algebraically to figure out what x is going to be. So what's my one step to get x alone? Multiply by 50, great. So x is 50 times the tangent of 73. That I will let a calculator help me with. So let's see here. So that would be 163.5, but remember, Tammy Jo is about five feet tall. So to get the rest of the building from the base, I need to add that five to it. Okay, so don't go to all the work of doing all the trig right and then forget about her being five feet tall and we're at eye level. And that's it. So your job is to knock out the ones that we haven't done. We'll do the actual preview tomorrow. Give you a chance to see it all again, get on a roll, and then we'll be looking at a quiz and a homework check on 